first loading, second loading. A while ago I was intentionally looking for a bugs in Doom that would allow me to execute my own code. Here is one of a few I found. This function is responsible for loading things from a map file. Things are stuff such as a weapon, enemy decoration and so on. Usually this function just spawns a new thing based on unique ID specified in editor. However, there are a few special IDs. Player starts are ID 1 to 4 and deathmatch start is 11. These are handled differently. This is the part that handles non deathmatch starts. Here is a check for player ID. Here it saves location for later. Well, player 1 is at index 0. But then what happens if player ID is 0? This check will pass anyway, yet there is no player 0. Well, 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Yes, you can index by negative numbers. There are even use cases for that. Here, however, it's a bug. This will overwrite a memory just before where player starts are stored. Maybe not quite useful, but it gets worse. Here's how things are stored in map files. Think type is short, which means it can be negative. It's not just a 0 player ID. So we can choose any negative number and overwrite anything in memory, right? Well, no, there's another catch. If we are not in that match, which we are not, the game spawns player right away. Spawning a negative player ID is a whole new can of worms. Fortunately, there is a workaround. This part of player spawn function is interesting. It uses player ID to check if player is actually playing, and if not, it stops right away. There's that negative index stuff, again. So whether player is spawned or not is determined by whatever happens to be in memory at that location. I didn't want to do this manually, so I wrote a memory scan. Anyway, certain negative numbers can overwrite states. Well, now I have to explain what states are. Well, states define how things should look, animate and often even behave. Basically, it's a big table. Like, really, really big table. Each state specifies which sprite and frame should be rendered and for how long. If duration is negative, this state lasts forever. After duration expires, next state is used. Each state can optionally have an action specified. This action is actually a pointer to the machine code and it's executed right when the state is set. This might seem like a fun stuff to overwrite. Here are a few examples. A torch decoration. A power up. A player walking. Spooky scary skeleton. Anyway, let's check which states and what exactly can we overwrite. Well, there are quite a few interesting things we can overwrite, but I want to test this first. So let's overwrite the next state of something. And this seems to be the only useful next state we can overwrite. It's part of animation of night vision goggles. I'm gonna make a very simple test map. Just a single room. Player start. And night vision. Oh, and one thing we will modify soon. This is a list of all things in this map. We want to modify the last one. X position has to be 0. Y position is our destination state number. Direction has to be 0. And finally think type. This editor won't let me use negative numbers here. Here's a quick workaround. This is the same number, just a different representation. Success! Let's play with this a bit, shall we? It's just a visual change. Hold on, what just happened? We only changed think state, but think type should still be night vision. Well, Doom code is a mess. Clearly, it was made by multiple people. Whoever made pickup code didn't use think type, but can think sprite instead. Oh, and there's an error exit if you try to pick up unexpected sprite. Do you remember walking player example? It's just a visual change, for real this time. You can't hit it with anything, just don't touch it.
let's make a few changes. Here's a thing that causes the bug, don't touch it. Here are a few changes. Yep, still fake. These are also fake. Once they see you, they disappear because Night Vision doesn't have walking animation. Ok, that's enough for now. Let's just get rid of those unhittable players before we stop. Now for actions. There are indeed quite a few actions we can override. Though it's not all that useful. We do not have any good target to jump at. Yes, there is stuff that was loaded with the map, but we don't know where it is in the memory. Well then, what can we do? Do you remember out of bounds indexing on player starts? We can do this on states, we control next state and it's not checked anywhere. Ok, it's unlikely that there is something useful right after the states, what should we target anyway? Well, some graphics is always loaded in the memory, like a status bar and can be customized with the map file. These are the key icons, the game has to keep a memory pointer to this, somewhere, which is a great news for us. Now we just have to find the state number where this pointer happens to be an action of this state. Like this, it's a huge number, but who cares, right? If we just ignore the fact that it is supposed to be an image, we can put an executable code here. Yeah, Doom doesn't check if images are valid. This is not an issue if we do not allow this image to be rendered. Of course, sprite, frame and next state are garbage, but that is only used after the action is executed. We can do whatever we want before that happens. Alright, let's do this. Use out of bound state number. Create a new entry for our code and load it. This is our test code and these are the instructions. I'm just setting EAX and EBX to custom value and then causing an exception. There we go, game ended, it's just that the graphics mode is still on. Just type CLS and press enter. And values are changed, our code was executed. Congratulations, now you can do anything you want. Here's my code, it's not that big, it's a loader. It is supposed to fix broken stuff, load the second part, which is much bigger, and disable everything between ace code and ace end. Well, I've got it and ported Chocolate Doom to this exploit. Yes, we're gonna be running a completely new game engine in the old one. Let's make a simple demo map. Doom textures are forced to be exactly 128 pixels high, I have to use two layers here. That looks good, enough. Let's try it. <laughs> what happened here? Well, frame buffer and textures. Frame buffer is stored in memory from left to right and top to bottom, while Doom textures are stored from top to bottom and left to right. Every rendering function has to be modified. Ok, done. It's working. Both games are running independent of each other. That means you need double the memory. I would recommend you to get at least 16MB of RAM. Now I can press F12 to control the other game. It's not just a cinema. There's no sound or music though. But cheat works. Movie time. Do you remember this? Well, it's quite nice. It's just this test map can be better. I'm gonna make it look a bit better. Well, there's a new screen room and a few utility rooms around. Let me show. Here's some info, you can pause the video if you want. Oh yeah, I can enhance the original game just by modifying its memory. 
Here are a few promotion posters for my other stuff. Mm hmm doom doors. At least I fixed that double closing sound. It's a show now. I've added quite a few details you can play with. Doom doors. Here you can match the screen almost precisely if you want to play full screen. Confusing, isn't it? And this is a trip room. Alright, that's enough. These doors have to go. I can modify the original game. I can do something better. Do you know Hexen by the way? Isn't this much better? Now, Chocolate Doom doesn't have to be just Doom. Let me show what I mean. See, it's not Doom anymore. Yes, it's running a heretic game. I had to do some extra stuff as heretic uses different palette than Doom. So, color quality suffered a bit. But you can still play it. Even transparency works, though I had to do some extra stuff for that too. Well, that's it. Everything you see here is available on my GitHub, source code and ready to use what files. This will indeed work on a real hardware. You just need 16 megabytes of RAM. I have this 486 75 megahertz testing hardware with a broken screen. Bonus stuff. These are my other exploits I've created. This save game contains a playable snake game. Of course, it's an exploit in save game files. Oh yeah, and the original demos are playing in the background. This is a game injection, it's a JPEG and it contains a playable game, Asteroids. Just right click it, save us and rename it to dim save format. And finally here's a demo what I've made about a year ago. It shows some possible modifications to the original game.